So you went to the gong show and you put... <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Fleming. <clears throat> mm. you, you want some? Yeah, well, I hope it goes down really easy. You want some? I, I send you some. What? No, I'll I'm trying to quit. But oh, okay. Anyway, you know, you um, on that thing. So, you, so basically sure. you, were, you were looking to get some work and then you figured out ah, if I go on the show, everybody's going to know who I am. It's so embarrassing. Not exactly. It was actually my club. I, I bought a nightclub after the Sony and Cher show mm -hmm. called Showbiz, uh, which uh, uh, guys like, uh, you know, uh, David Letterman lived around the corner for me, worked there all the time, and uh, Michael Keaton was actually... Uh, Almost discovered at my place. He was Michael Douglas back then. But he worked my place all the time. Where was the club exactly? Where in, in L.A.? On uh, Lancaster and Victory in North Hollywood. Yeah. Oh God! I must have passed that place a hundred times. Yeah, right on Lancaster and Victory, right on the corner. And uh, you know, I had it for a couple of years, and uh, I specialized in bankruptcy and became very successful. <laughs> Uh, I lost my ass in the place, but uh, it was an interesting place. Like I said, you know, Deborah Winger was one of my uh, waitresses. I actually yeah. got busted because of her, and then did you pop her? Did so, you get a little, you know, little, little stooping over there with her? Uh, Deborah and I had a little fling. I'm not going to use those kinds of words, but no, we, uh, we, 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 you know, she, was, we got. Well, she was only 18. I was like the first guy. She tell you to put the bag over your head, or? Uh, that was be, that was pre bag. You know? Oh, pre bag. Uh, Deborah ended up dating a few comics after me. You know, I mean, uh, I think, uh, uh, well, Gary Mule there for one, and Richard Lewis, I think, for another. Yeah. But I was that's, first, that's uh, exciting. Comic, that's, yeah. that's not much competition for you, though. I mean, you know, Richard Lewis and Gary Mule Deer <laughs> <laughs> pulling an arrow on his guitar string. <laughs> Uh, Rich, I, I mean, uh, Gary, I just worked with him uh, he's know, a maybe a year and a half ago. He's, he still kicks ass. He's working, he's working with... Uh, um, uh, uh, Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. For right. 100 years. Yeah. 100 years. I worked with him up in Pebble Beach. We did a thing with Vince Gill, uh, Glenn Campbell, I think, was there, and uh, John Denver. And uh, that was pretty exciting. And uh, uh, yeah, Mildew yeah, was great. Nice he was great. I, I like Gary a lot. Always a... A regular down home guy, no no bullshit, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's what I liked about. Like that's what I, I liked I about you, you know. No bullshit with you. You know where you stand. Yeah, when you yeah. grab my ass, I know what it means, you know. And Richard Lewis dated my sister back in those days. You went right over that, huh? You didn't want the public to know that you grabbed my ass. Who did? You did. I want the public to know that you grabbed my you ass. You didn't want the public. You just went over that when I said that. Why'd you slide over that? Well, I guess my nipples were hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you had the club, and then what happened? You figured... Well, I had my club for two years, and I lost my ass in it. You know, I, yeah. I, I used all that money in the Sunny and Cher show, <clears throat> those hundreds of dollars I made there, right. and, uh, and bought the club. And uh, like I said, it was an interesting place, uh, that's for sure, with a lot of the people that, you know, became huge today, you know, were working back then. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, but I lost my ass there, and the place went uh, out of business, and I had no money, and I was back to square one broke. Yeah. The gong show at that time, it had already been on the air like six months. And if you're in the union, uh, which I was in because of all those previous TV shows I've done, uh, uh, they had to pay you to be on the gong right, show. Right, you get like 500 bucks every time you go on. It was not much then. It was maybe like 200 and something. Oh, okay. Back in those days. Uh, and so I needed the 200 and something dollars, but I didn't want my friends to see me on this, this wacko gong show. So that's where I came up with the idea. I'll put a bag over my head and I'll just do a couple stupid jokes and I'll make myself a couple hundred dollars and... And I went on, and I, you know, I still remember the first joke I did to Chuck. I said, hey, you and your wife ever make love in the shower? And he said, no. I said, well, you should. She loves it, hey. <laughs> but, uh, and the eyes laughed, and Chuck laughed, and he, after the joke, you know, hey, you got to do another put-down joke on me. So I, from then on, I just kept trying to come up with these jokes to put Chuck down, you know, and did about 150 gong shows, and 150 times 200 and something dollars, that's over $400 right there I made. <laughs> very okay. good very good thank you and uh, you've been very busy are you coming out of retirement now i hear you're uh you did a george clooney flick yeah that was years ago that okay. was like uh oh gee, that's about <clears throat> five six years ago now yeah and well, actually i had to fight to get it because they they were going to use somebody else because and it was shot in my hometown of montreal too and they because in Montreal, you can get somebody for 300 bucks a day, you know, and that's yeah. all they needed was somebody for a day. So they just, you know, put a bag over somebody else's head. That was uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. So I called up the studio and, and found out and told them that I didn't want uh, uh, the unknown comic in the movie. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, uh, and uh, I swear, the, the couple, I guess a couple hours after they got that word, George Clooney called me at home on the phone. Mm hmm. 
himself because he was directing that movie. That movie, right? The first directorial effort. And uh, anyway, he was super nice and said, you know, uh, you know, I'm sorry that we did this with my producers. You know, we're we're trying to do this low budget. And he said, I'll fly you down here. I'll pay you lots of money. And and he did. So he flew me down there and gave me a great vacation and shot some stuff without the bag. That's good. Uh, so it turned out to be a great thing. And you did Levity with uh, Billy Bob Thornton, too. You know, I don't know where that ever came from. You didn't? I, I think I saw that somewhere. I never did that. You oh, know, I've okay. done lots of movies. Well, at least you're honest. You know, most guys would go, yeah, I did that, you know. No, no, I don't know where that ever came from. Uh, I, I think I remember seeing that somewhere. I mean, I I did interesting movies I did was like Skate Town USA, Patrick Swayze's first movie. Didn't you write a movie with Linda Blair, I think? I did. Were? I've uh, written three movies. Oh, what are they? Well, Up Your Alley uh, was the first one I, I did with uh, Linda Blair about the homeless people. Mm -hmm. And that did pretty good. You know, I used a lot of people, a lot, oh, a lot did, of comics in there. Then I did another movie Night called Patrol. Wish, Night, Night Patrol was another one, wasn't it? Oh, Night Patrol was the first one. Come to okay. Remember, yeah. Was Night okay. Patrol was the first movie I wrote. And, uh, you know, that was a wacko. That was actually written and produced before Police Academy even. And uh, I was surprised you weren't on uh, Police Academy. You would have been perfect in it. Well, because uh, they, we were in our, our, our uh, post-production when, when they were filming that, and you know, uh, I, didn't, I heard about another police movie being made after we had already finished ours. But anyway, the long story short is that I, 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 you know, I, I had made a deal with the, uh, the guys who produced Night Patrol, uh, and they, they uh, didn't keep their side of the bargain at all, and I ended up walking away from the movie. No. Uh, yeah. It still made a lot of money for them, and I never saw a penny. They, it actually made a lot of money. Uh, yeah. But I just hated the, what they were doing in editing, and uh, and uh, and a little soap opera goes along with uh, with what really happened, which will be in my memoirs when they come out. As a matter of fact, you are writing memoirs. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I'm uh, writing. I finally decided to sit down and write the highlights and lowlights of my life of every year from the day I was born. I think it'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, as I wrote it, because I, I, I was really amazed at how much stuff I did going through it. Like I said, uh, you know, the movies with Patrick Crazy, but you know, uh, whether it was uh, the Coney thing or, or, you know, when you get down to it, I mean, spending, you know, uh, for this little kid from Montreal, all of a sudden spending Christmas Eve with Lucille Ball, you know, mm -hmm. at her house. Because mm -hmm. right, I dated Lucy Arnaz back then, or uh, had partying all night with Elvis Presley in a suite. <clears throat> Did, getting a phone call and getting threatened by Frank Sinatra. Or, did Did you have any relatives in the states? I mean, to run to take off like that at you know eighteen years old and go with nothing—that's a lot of balls, man. I give you credit for yeah, that. Yeah, actually, well, uh, again, you'll read in my memoirs. I was uh, like in a, getting a little lot of trouble in Montreal when I was you know sixteen, seventeen. Mm -hmm. I was involved in some gangs. Yeah. And robbing apartments and stuff like that. And I said I had to get out of there. They all wore bags over their heads. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> where it started. Yeah. yeah. I knew that. No, no. You produced your own cable show too, right? The the unknown. So something? called the uh, the uh, the uh, the unknown comedy show with uh, I think James Marcel, who ended up changing his name to James Wilder, and Johnny Dark, the aforementioned Johnny Dark. Uh -huh. And uh, but I mean I, I I produced a lot of shows uh, uh, back in those days uh, that were you know cable oriented. I did you know I did a lot of stuff for Playboy Channel. I did the Sex and Violence Family Hour. Did you mm. see that there? Oh yeah, when you you had that stick and you were beating yourself on the butt. I remember. The that. Sex and Fa Sex and Violence Family Hour is actually produced by Playboy and and uh, we shot in Toronto and it was uh, actually Jim Carrey's first job. Really? <laughs> uh, it was with me and him and I did all these sketches together <laughs> on that show back when he was uh, never had a TV job in his life, yeah. You booked me once, I think. Didn't I work at a casino with you somewhere out in LA? There was a casino you had me work with. It was with a you. mistake. Uh, yeah, it was. It was terrible. How the hell that happened? I must have thought you were somebody else. You must have thought I was talented. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a funny guy. <laughs> oh, God. So now uh, now you uh, basically left all, all this to take care of your kids because that was important for you, right? Yeah, when I, when I had my first daughter, who's now 20 of all, almost 23, uh, I just decided that, uh, you know, if you're going to have a kid, that should be a responsibility. Yeah. yeah. That's a good guy. You're a good guy. Responsibilities on my kid. Yeah. And, well, and, and so I, I uh, sort of, you know, I mean, I worked occasionally, but I've, all my energies went into her, toward yeah. raising my daughter, and I had a second one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who uh, has this Down syndrome thing, which is, uh, for me, like a little gold mine. I mean, I couldn't be happier with her. And, yeah. Uh, 
and and and, and again, my energies, uh, my my kids are <coughs> much more important than anything. Well, that's you know they have to be, man, because that's your real world. You know, everything else. You is know, like, I just saw so many people uh, as I was coming up in the business or coming up to the middle. Anyway, I mm. never really went that far, but I did okay. But I, I just watched so many people who just. Uh, you know, their kids didn't become that important. They, they they literally would become addicted to the show business. Yeah, they get a maid to take care of the kid, the bastards. They, yeah, the well, the maid, or even if they weren't, uh, didn't couldn't afford a maid, they let the wife, and they were never there. Yeah. You know, they were always on the road or something like that. And and I just knew that that would never happen to me. I, I knew that uh, if I'm going to take the responsibility of having a kid, and uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm there for them. Yeah, what drives me crazy is these broads. They're, they're movie actresses and stuff, and they, they go on and have a baby through somebody else because they don't want to lose their figure. You know, it's so important to keep that figure and look good for themselves. And so they get this... Actually, point. I did have somebody else uh, father my, both my kids because I, I, you know, I, I was... Uh, well, you you wanted to keep your figure? figure? But my, my oh. penis, it was nothing but stretch marks. Oh, my God, yeah. I could, yeah, yeah. I could understand uh, I that. I didn't want to lose its shape. It, it was really very attractive at one time. Does your penis lose its stretch marks at late late night? Is Does that the song? Does your penis lose yeah. its stretch marks on the bed, bed, bed post overnight? Yeah, that's the song. That's it, right. But your daughter's doing very good. She uh, published over, what, 50 songs by the age of 19? Oh, she must have over 100 songs just on YouTube alone. Yeah, if anybody wants to check it out, Maya Marie, M-Y-A-H. Maya Marie, and she's on YouTube. Just Google Google her or go on YouTube. She's got... Uh, I gotta do that. She uh, sang, you know, on Britney Spears' last album, she sang background on seven of the songs. Oh, that's great! Yeah, and she got credit on each song. Maya Marie is credit, and on uh, she she sang on the last two of Britney Spears' albums, and will probably do the next one too. But uh, you know, because she can sound exactly like Britney, uh, and and it, the only reason she got into it is she was writing songs. She's she's really a songwriter, and 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 sent a bunch of demos into the uh, Britney camp. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, of songs that she wrote, but she tried to sound like Britney. So when they got them, they said, holy crap, this, this girl, uh, so they hired her to use her to, to do backgrounds, you know, stuff like that. And uh, But even though my daughter is, uh, you know, mainly wants to be a songwriter, but it's hard to get a song into any of these big yeah, yeah. stars because yeah. it, it's very simple math. Anybody, anybody's producing these, these albums, you know, uh, uh, of these, huge stars, if you get a song on it, you're automatically, you automatically make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. If it becomes a hit song off the album, you, you know, you become a millionaire. That's just the math associated with it. So they're not just going to give anybody, you know, these guys who produce these albums, they're going to give the opportunities to their buddies and their friends. Of, of so course, yeah. Very, sure. very hard to get in that door. Yeah. And that's the reality of it. So you're doing, a, you're doing a lot of charity work for children now? That's really nice. All right. Yeah, you know, it's odd because uh, when I was on the Sonny and Cher show, uh, again, that'll be in my memoirs, I actually uh, uh, got involved with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, an organization that took care of, uh, you know, retarded kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, it's just unusual that, you know, years later, and I actually had uh, a young boy that had you know, a lot of mental problems that lived with me for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, named Alan Cook, uh, and uh, so that I actually watched for years. I took care of for years uh, on the side. And uh, and so for me to have a child with Down syndrome was like perfect, you know, because yeah. I had the experience. Yeah. So there's a, before you go now, because I know you got to go pick up your daughter. Oh, yeah, if anybody <laughs> wants to check my Twitter, too, I'm on Twitter, The Unknown Comic. I, uh, do, I do lines every day, all and day. You, and and uh, you're on Facebook, too. Are you on Twitter? Do you follow yeah. me on Twitter? No, I, I think I will now. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm throwing lines all day, every day. Good for you, man. Yeah. And even Facebook, a lot of people think I do it for them. I, you know, I really do it just for me. You know, I'm 68, so I, I, I just want to keep my brain in shape. You're 68? Yeah, but I, I don't look a day over... Uh, 48? 72. 72. No, I, I'd say, yeah, yeah, 62 maybe. No, I feel great. No, I mean, I, I, I you know, it's odd uh, it, because so many of my friends seem to have problems. I swear, I, I wake up. Uh, at 68, I don't feel any different than I did at 38, I, and I'm not kidding. I'm as healthy as can be. Well, stay healthy because you're a great guy. And uh, Edgewater Hotel, by the way, I don't know if this is going to be on before August 3rd, Saturday, August 3rd. I'll be at the Edgewater Hotel in Laughlin. Okay, it won't be on. Oh, it won't be on. Well, no. then I was on, and I was fabulous. <laughs> I was great. 
<laughs> Murray, thanks for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate this. You got it, buddy. All right, Peggy, you take care. Okay, man. So go uh, give Love you too. give your kid a hug for me, will you, please? All right, and don't forget next Thursday. Oh, well, what is it? You forgot. I hate that. I know. I do that every time. This is the Frankie Pay Show. You've been listening to my interview with Murray Langston, the unknown comic, and. Uh,